All right, let's get ready to show the country what Kentucky's all about, people. Next, it's my pleasure and my honor to introduce one of Kentucky's fine senators, Senator Rand Paul. Is Kentucky Trump country? Now, some of you may remember, once upon a time, my first choice for president wasn't Donald J. Trump. However, I will tell you that he grows on you. I will also tell you that every day, virtually every day, he exceeds my expectations. Together, as a team with the Republican Congress, we now have not one, but two conservative justices. I hear someone yelling two more. So about a, about a year ago, I was playing golf with the president after he had appointed Gorsuch. And I said, well, Mr. President, you could possibly get to a point three. And the president, the president never to be outdone said, I think I'm gonna point five. It's what I love about the president. It's optimism, it's boldness, it's defying the status quo, defying the mainstream media, and doing what's best for America. Together, a Republican Congress and President Trump have passed the largest tax increase in my lifetime tax decrease in my lifetime. We are leaving more in your pockets than you have had in a long time. Over 90% of America will have more in their paycheck because of the largest tax cut in our lifetime. President Trump and Republican Congress have repealed more regulations than any administration ever. Andy Barr has been a leader of this in the House. We're gonna send Andy Barr back? But I wanna tell you for a minute how it works up there and how President Trump has been an instrumental part of making it better. Tax cuts. Republicans have said forever, oh yeah, we're for tax cuts, and yet, some in the establishment up there will say, oh, we're just gonna do revenue neutral. What does that mean? That means half of you pay more taxes, half of you pay less taxes, and the net result is neutral or zero. Wouldn't have been a tax cut at all. That's what they were saying was impossible, and what did the president say? He said, no, let's go big, bold, or go home. I want a tax cut. So when the first tax cut rolled out, we looked at it, we read it. We actually try to read the bills. So we read the bill and we were alarmed that the establishment, the first go at tax cuts, actually was gonna raise taxes on the middle class. So I called the president, I called the president, and he said, come to the White House. He arranged his staff and I looked at him and I said, Mr. President, the tax bill that they've written is gonna raise taxes on the middle class. And he says, I won't sign it. I will not sign an increase in taxes on the middle class. And what makes President Trump different than other presidents? He looked at his staff and he said, make it so. So we turned what could have been a disaster into the largest tax cut in our lifetime. Yeah. 
So we're going through this debate. It's not tax reform. And he still tells these people in Washington, half the people in Washington, Republicans are saying, oh, it's tax reform. No, it's a tax cut. The president tells you every time it's a tax cut. It's not revenue neutral. It cuts everyone's taxes. And then we got to the end of the debate and we said, many of the conservatives, we said, why don't we repeal the individual mandate from Obamacare? And I kid you not, once again, naysayers in the Republican Party said, oh, we don't want to mix tax cuts in health care. Now, some of these people are the same ones who promised to repeal Obamacare and then voted to keep Obamacare. So we suggested to the president, let's also repeal the linchpin of Obamacare. Let's repeal the individual mandate, the tax that 25,000 Kentuckians who make less than $50,000 a year, the working class, the poor in our state, were paying this tax. And the president said, absolutely, let's do both. And in the end, we were able to repeal the individual mandate also. Anybody watch the Kavanaugh hearings? Anybody think it was a disgrace what the Democrats did to him? I was so embarrassed for the country that I wrote him and his wife a note and said, I'm ashamed of what they did to you. Will Kavanaugh be a good justice? I have great hopes. For decades after decades, the Supreme Court has given deference to big government and given deference to unelected bureaucrats who write the rules. And when it comes before the court, the court says, oh, well, bureaucrats win, taxpayer loses. Kavanaugh, mark my words, is going to change the deference where we are no longer deferring to big government and unelected bureaucrats. The first month of President T Trump's term, we repealed $67 billion worth of regulations. More regulations repealed than any other administration ever. How crazy are these regulations? Well, I'll give you an example. These unelected bureaucrats that hopefully the Supreme Court is going to strike down Unelected bureaucrats have said that over time, dirt, dirt is a pollutant, and your backyard is a stream. So they come to your yard, to your house, to your farm, to your land. Right now, the federal government claims that over 90% of Kentucky's land can be regulated by the EPA. That's wrong, and we're going to stop it. So at the Kavanaugh hearings, it was disgraceful. There were screaming, angry people all over the hill. When the vice president left, they were yelling vulgarities and raising their middle finger to the vice president of the United States. No respect at all. And so you would expect, would the Democrat leaders actually chastise them and say, enough's enough, we're not going to act this way? Hillary Clinton said, civility we're going to be civil after we win. Hillary Clinton said that. <laughs> what a sore loser. She's on the perpetual wine, wine, wine. Tour. You're here tonight to see the president, but you're also here tonight to see your next speaker. Your next speaker is a leader in the House of Representatives, a leader in fighting for tax cuts, a leader in fighting to repeal regulations. And I promise you this, if the Republicans 
are defeated, if the Democrats take over the House, from day one it's going to be investigate the president, impeach the president, and nothing good will happen in the country. Whether you live in Andy Barr's district or not, you're here, you support the president, you need to get out. In the last couple of weeks, you need to help him knock on doors. If you do not live in his district, you need to drive to his district. Andy Barr is one of the 20 seats in the House that could be lost. Every other seat in Kentucky is fairly safe. All the rest of the Republicans are safe. All the rest of the Trump supporters are safe. Andy Barr has the hardest race. So if you do not live in his district, you need to drive to his district. If you have not given him money, you need to give him money or time. He needs your help. If the House flips, all of the good things that have been happening will come to a screeching halt. Can you imagine the crazy people yelling and screaming when they get in charge of the committees and when they begin investigating the president? It'll be craziness. What I'd like you now to do is to give a warm Kentucky reception to the congressman that needs your help, Andy Barr.